Hello friends, welcome to the part 2 of 7 arguments of highly effective Java application. In this part, we are going to discuss about thread stack size, which is XSS. To understand thread stack size, XSS, it might be better if we have a proper foundational knowledge on how a Java program is executed. To fair, to me, uh, so for this session, I have written a simple Java program called as simple example. And this program has a main method, right? And this main method is invoking method A. This method A has a primitive data type integer whose value uh, x is equal to 1. And after creating this primitive data type, uh, this method A is invoking method B. And if you see the method B, method B is instantiating a car object, a complex data type, and then it's assigning to the variable Y. And after doing that, it goes on to invoke method C. And method C is not doing anything fancy, it's just creating a primitive float data type Z is equal to 2.11F. So, so this is a very hypothetical example, simple Java program. So let's see what happens behind the scenes when this program is executed. See friends, in the earlier part one, we saw the different regions of uh, JVM memory. Just a quick recap of that. See, there is this end generation. This is where when a newly created object goes in and if an object has survived for a longer period, it is promoted to the old generation. And end generation and old generation is where our application level objects are stored. And meta space is a place where JVM stores is metadata information, the class definitions, method definitions to require to execute the program. Okay. So we also saw in the earlier part that the threads are created outside this end generation, old generation meta space in this what we call as a others region. Okay. So threads are created in this outside all these three regions. Okay. So let's say now a thread now comes to execute uh, this may execute this program. So now a thread comes. So visualize this red arrow mark as the thread. Okay. So when a thread comes, a thread as a thread stack, right? This thread stack is coming from the others region. Okay. So this is how a thread stack looks. So when a thread executes the main method, what does it do? Is it adds the main method into its stack frame. So this is the very first method it's executed. This is the very first stack frame of this thread. So from here, let's see what happens to the thread. The thread goes on to ex invoke the method A. So when it comes to method A, now the method A is added to the stack frame. Okay. But now you see this method A is creating a primitive variable, integer variable x whose value is 1. Where is this x is equal to 1? Where is this going to be stored? In young generation, old generation or where? Actually, since x is a local variable, and it is also a primitive data type. They are not stored in both in not in the end generation or in the old generation. Rather, it is stored within the threads stack itself. So x is equal to one is stored here in the thread stack itself. Yes. And now let's see a thread now progresses to invoke method B. Right? When it goes to method B, method B is added to the stack frame. But you see here. The car object is instantiated. See, car is a complex data type. It's not a primitive data type. All complex data types are created in the, initially it is created in the young generation. So you can see the car is created in this young generation. But the Y is a local variable. That is, it can, it can be only accessed within this method B. So the, as we saw, the local variable is created here. The Y is created here. And the pointer, the y points to this car object, All right? Make sense? And now this thread moves on to invoke method C. When it progresses to invoke method C, now it go, it has added the method C into the stack frame and float is a primitive data type. And so its value is stored here within the stack frame itself, within the thread stack itself. Okay, got it. So now this brings a question. I can set the maximum size for my young generation, old generation through this XMX. And I can also set the maximum metaspace size using this property JVM argument max metaspace size. Is there is an argument to set the limit on my thread stack size? 
Answer is yes. That argument is what XSS, thread stack size, this is what it is. You can set it to 256 kilobyte, 512 kilobyte or 1 MB or based on your application demand. But friends, if you set it to be a very aggressive value, say you set it to very aggressive value and your stack keeps growing, then you will run into what is the famous Java Lang stack overflow error. So I have an example to show just in a few minutes. Okay, we'll look at that when we get there. Okay. So now let's come back to this program. The thread has now a completed executing the method C and there's no more lines of code to be executed in this program. So now what will happen? The thread will start to leave the method. It will start to exit the method. So now, now it's going to leave the method C. Now you see uh, the C method and this uh, primitive data type Z is equal to one is there. The moment the, the thread exits the C method, you see that stack frame is removed from the thread, from the thread stack. So C is gone and then the, the local variable Z 2.11 is also removed, it is gone. And now, say now we are here, the thread has completed executing method B, now it's going to leave method B. Now this is where it gets interesting. You see, now when thread leaves this method B, what happens? The B method from the stack frame is removed and the variable Y is also removed. But if you see this car object which was created still continues to remain in the memory. It still continues to remain in the memory. It will continue to remain in the memory until the next garbage collection event runs. See when the next garbage collection event run, it's going to see oh whether this car object has any references. So now there is no more any there is no more active references. The only guy who was referencing was Y and now Y has gone. So since there is no more active reference for this car object, now this object becomes eligible for garbage collection. But until that next GC event run, this, this car object is going to be residing in the memory. Okay. So now let's come here. The thread has now completed executing method A. So now when it, when it leaves, the method A also gets removed from the stack frame. And now the thread comes here. The main method is exec is completed execution. So when it has completed the execution, now the thread stacks becomes free. There are no more stack frames here in this thread stack. Okay. So friends, now let me show you a program so that uh, a real world program so that you, it will enhance our understanding of this argument. Okay, so friends, this is a, a program called as a Stack Overflow Demo. So this is coming from a Buggy app. So Buggy app is an open source program which can simulate various sort of performance problem. So this program, let's see what does it do. It doesn't, it's very simple program. So here it has a start method and this start method, it is having a, this, this class has a member variable called counter. It's initialized to zero. And the start method, it increments a counter value whenever it executes. And then after that, what does it do? For every thousand iterations, it just prints that. I, I say looped thousand times, looped two thousand times. It just keeps printing that. And then here it comes and it invokes the start method once again. You see, the start method is invoked rec recursively again and again and again without a terminating condition. So what happens now, if you recall, in the thread stack frame, the start method is going to be added again and again and again and again. And when it go past that XSS limit, then you will start to see stack overflow error. Okay. So now what we will do, we will execute this program. Now I'm executing this program with the argument XSS to be 512 kilobytes. I'm setting it to 512 kilobytes and then I'm running it. So let me run it. So when I ran, you see, this program as suspected, it got stack overflow error, right? Because it got past that limit, the 512 kilobyte limit, and then it printed the stack overflow error. But you can see this thread has looped for 7,000 times. 
right? It has looped for 7,000 times. Just for the sake of fun, what I will do now, now I will increase this XSS size from 512 kilobyte to let me make it as 1 megabyte. Making it as 1 megabyte and then I am running it. Now when I ran, you see the total iterations has become 12,300. Earlier it was 7,000 plus, it is almost close to doubled up. So because I increased the XSS limit, so it was able to loop for more time but still after more time because it's a buggy code. When there's a buggy code, it doesn't matter how much memory you allocate, still you will end up with the error. But now it, the, the, the death of this the stack overflow error has happened a little later. Like it after 12,000 iterations, it has happened. Okay. So now I think you understand this XSS value. Okay. So I'm coming back here. Okay. So friends, so the XSS is the third important JVM argument that you want to pass to your application. And friends, if you don't set the XSS value, the default value varies by the underlying operating system and by the JVM version that you are running on. Say if you are running on a Spark 32-bit JVM, then the XSS size is 512 kilobyte. And if you are going to run on a 64-bit JVM, then it's going to take 1024 kilobyte. Right? Similarly, it varies. So you want to make sure you want to set up the appropriate XSS, the thread stack size for your application. Okay. And then here there is an another hyperlink which we have given. Where we, are, where we discuss about are Java threads memory efficient. So there are some handicapness there. So there is a separate uh, blog so which you can reference and you can go into the detail of that. Okay friends, thank you for watching the part 2 of 7 JVM arguments of highly effective applications.